Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Sir Markadoo here. Just letting you know that we're going to have a great, great broadcast. This is something that you definitely want to share with your business associates. It's going to go crazy. I'm not, you know, you, you have business associates around the globe. You have friends and family that uh, need money, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. You have a lot of, we have friends, we have family. We have loved ones around the United States and around the globe, but the United States that need extra money, you would love to get into business with us, you have to learn how to share with others. Now I got a brother down in uh, New Orleans that I'm getting ready to share a graphic artist with. He needs it. He, I mean, to me, turning him on to that graphic artist is no, is no threat to me. Why would I help him? Get him there. You need websites? I have a business associate that do, does websites. We gotta get you all more acclimated to business stuff. Electronic name tags, you gotta have it. Today we know the topic is mentoring and recruiting. This is where, if, if you talk to people that know me, this is something that I mastered. Now I'm going to take it to another dimension. I'm going to take it to a place where the average person doesn't really have a clue of what they're doing. Do yourself a favor. Make sure you have that pen and paper ready. Because you want to write a couple of notes. I know my boy Patrick Julian, he be listening real good in the mornings. And, and Patrick, I'm talking to you specifically. I'm talking to my buddy Keith. I'm talking to Jamil down in South Carolina. I'm talking to all my partners that uh, tunes into this broadcast. It doesn't matter. I told, my, I told Mark this morning, with this segment, need to be posted at any video spots that we can get it posted. Social media go crazy with this. Now, I want to look at how most people's mindset is first before we get into mentoring and recruiting. You can ask the average person, what is it and how do you make money? How is it that you make your money? And do you need extra cash? How's your, how's your flow going? They say, well, they say pretty good, but do you need extra cash? They say, yeah. I said, how are you going to go about Making some extra Ask your wife. Ask your husband. They are lost in space. Most people don't know how to make extra cash in no situation. I've I know people say they in business. They ain't making no money in their business. This is something that is fundamentally wrong with America today. I'm not, I'm not throwing people under the bus, but there are uh, lots of people that they're in business and they really ain't got nothing going on. Yeah, they're working towards it and stuff like that. And that's fine. They're fine and dandy psychologically. Uh, you know, it's screwy. You know, you think about it and you can say how much money. If, if people were honest, in which most of them are not, 
if they were really, really honest, and you asked them how much money are you making daily in their business, that's where the rubber meets the road. Right there. You get inside, if they were honest about where they are with their careers, they're nowhere. And most people, if you really look at it, they lean on other people for their existence. It's just a fact. They'll say they're in business and they're really, you know, they may be uh, messing around in that world, but it's, 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 it's uh, definitely, definitely, I think, a tragedy that people that say they're doing something and they're not, and they're really not. And let's get there. Let's go to another place. You got people that that feel that they're covered by God and all that. And you ask them where they where most of that God stuff comes from, who they talking to, they said, Well, I watch TV or they listen to radios or they listen to CDs or look at videos and, and you ask them how could who's their mentor? Who's mentoring them? A human being. Who's mentoring a human being mentor? Not somebody on TV. And you're covered. It ain't covered. Just because you're watching TV. Just because you're watching T.D. Jakes on TV. Or you listen to Jerry Clark. That's my boy down in Plano, Texas. Look him up, Rhino. Clubrhino.org. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, awesome speaker. Very creative. With words. But he's not my mentor. Now, I'm going to just get there because I'm going to be honest. You, you better... You know, most people won't get honest with themselves. I've found out now in my... Fasting and praying, I am well aware that I need a mentor. But see, I'm a, I'm smarter than the average person. I'm gonna get me three mentors, five mentors. I want people in different areas to mentor me. That's where the power is. I'm dealing with, you know. Even my son, lost in space. I don't care. Lost. Because why? Because if he think I'm just his mentor, he's, I'm his, I'm his father. I see myself more of my uh, as a father figure, teaching my son business tactics and stuff. That's all I really. That's really. It, you gotta ask. Him, if I ask him, yeah, I'm his mental, but I ain't enough. I ain't enough. I had a father son team in here today. I mean, yesterday. And it was weird. Oh my God. This is why I'm talking about this today. He was part of it. This team was a part of it. And one of my business associates, Keith, was a part of it. And then when I went to, uh, I went to, Bible study last night and it hit me like a ton of bricks because I spoke to Keith last night and said that's what I'm talking on this, this morning I said I'm talking about mentorship leadership and recruiting right I got a father son team there they're in the lobby and I know and believe it or not I was, uh, I said, yeah, I've been selling to you about five, six years. He said, no, nah, more than that. He said, more like 10. His son is 15. Yeah, boy, I remember he was a little boy, but I didn't know it was that long ago. He was five years old. And they, he was bringing his sons in there, and, you know, and they were buying up some things and doing their thing. And every now and then I would say to him, 
why don't you bring those kids in here and let me give them some advice and stuff like that. And he was always a play, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, they, you know, they made money every day. You know, the, of course, you know, people love children, especially if they're busy, they're young, and they're aggressive, right? You just want to support them, right? But he never did it. So yesterday, I was talking about it again, and he finally said something. He said, every time I come in here and you're around me, I learn something new. I said, but imagine, I learned most of what I know when I was a young boy. I mean, that, that little Brian thing, but I had, I had the, uh, I had the branding and marketing thing. I understood it at a young age. And, and I understood what it was to even recruit at a young age. And that's something I really taught myself. But then as I got older, I, 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 I got involved with multi-level marketing. And that's when I understood the really, the really a power of recruiting. And that was with, um, not bragging or nothing, just telling you a story. I was with A.L. Williams. And in my region, and I even touched the national market with this too, I was number one in recruiting. I was recruiter of the year. I was number three in the manager position nationwide. It was, it was just one of those errors where I learned so, so much. And now, I'm ready to do it again. I'm ready to do it on another level. I'm ready to teach it on another level. But going back to the father and that son team, I ended up talking enough to get them into the conference room. And I played back the episode of yesterday, yesterday's broadcast, and they sat here and listened, and listened, and before you know it, he realized what I was talking about on that video was right in tune with what with his thinking. He wants to quit his job by this year. He, you know, said to his son, "Hey, didn't I said I was going to just I was I, I was going to retire that job this year?" And but I said to him, I said, "How are you going to do it? If you think you're going to do it with the same information that's in your cranium in your dome right now, I said it's not going to happen. Is that you can't bully the market enough?" for you to retire. I said, you're going to need knowledge and wisdom. And I asked him, I asked both him and his son, I said to him, if you are going to retire your father, I said, it's going to take money to, to make money. Of course, you know, most people agree with that. It takes money to make money, right? Most people are going to agree with that. Here we go. It takes knowledge and wisdom. You can be broke as a joke. And if you don't have no money, how are you going to use nothing to make money? You got nothing. You have to have an idea. You have to have talent or a bunch of information to know that you can turn nothing into something. And believe me, I'm from the hood, the neighborhood, and I know a lot of people. And I know a lot of people that can't do that. They, they, don't, they can't turn nothing into something. They can't do it. You have to have the right 
mindset, the right knowledge and wisdom and temperament to turn nothing into something. Well, it took me, I, I started with $96. And here we are today. So, but I could have done it with $10. Same thing. It doesn't, my brain was wired to be successful no matter what I was dealing with. I would take a mayonnaise jar, fill it up with dirt, take some dandelions from the side of the road, stick it in there and start selling it. I got it, I've got them lined up. Mayonnaise jars, peanut butter jars, jelly jars, you name it, pickle jars. And I said, can I get all them jars? And I'll go ahead and start making me some money. I save me time, I won't even put no dirt in it. Just put a nice little side of the road bouquet together and say, ma'am, I'm just selling for a dollar. I'm not looking for a handout. I'm looking for a hand up. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you have customers, I don't care if you're doing a service. Trust me, if you have a product and you are moving that product, I don't care what it is. I, I got people that, that got access to, to displays that won't even sell one. And I said, how do you think, the, how do you think we're gonna make, people can make money? How do you think we make money? We gotta be able to take what we got to get what we want. It's just that simple. I'm ready. I'm going to show you now the first phase of recruiting. I'm not even going to talk about mentorship right now. Here we go. This is the first phase. Stop selling your customers. Of course, sales are good, but look at your customers now. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care if you got a service of uh, making up people's beds for them and putting candy on there and you making romantic nights for them. The thing is, recruit that customer by saying, if you can get if you said, do you know anybody needs some extra cash? They said, yeah, we can use some extra cash. I said, I will give you a percentage for every person that you turn on to me. And how would that make you feel? They said, I like your service. I like what you're doing. I would love to assist you. If you give me three referrals, I will give you a commission. Now, once they receive that commission, I said, do you know anybody else? And now I can even take it a little further and say, as long as this customer continues to buy from me, I will continue to give you that commission. And once they know that, they're going to keep on pushing. So that's the real deal. Stop selling your customers. Recruit them. If you can sell somebody a $5 bottle of anything, a $10 bottle of lotion, you make up a $10 bottle of lotion, you say, listen, if I, you, if you get in business with me, I'm going to give you these bottles, as long as you buy six or more, I'll give them to you for $6 each. What? Already buy, they already buy the product. They love the product. Even if they decided to use it for themselves, you just made more money anyway. If somebody calls you once a month and says, give me another six bottles, 
You got two dollars and fifty cents into the into the mix. Three dollars. You just made eighteen dollars profit. But if you sold one, you made eight dollars profit. Well, seven fifty. So understand the magnitude and the power that you possess when you offer your products and services at wholesale. So that people can make a little bit of commissions so that you can make a whole lot of commissions. And baby, that's the magic of wholesale distribution and recruiting. You, you need to recruit, be offering, just like when people come in, you buy, they buy a bottle from you, it's $5 or $36 a dozen. Hey, but if you buy 50, it's $2.50 a piece. But if you buy 100, they're $2.25 or $2 a piece. That's the power in the magic of, of recruiting. Think about it. Selling is just technique. You got all kinds of sales techniques. Every, I talk to people every day and they tell me all oh, how they sell it, all these techniques. But recruiting is an art. It's an art form. Once you understand how to recruit, when to recruit, the master of closing the deal on that recruit, you gotta treat it just like Mary Kay, which I've done Mary Kay. I was caught of sales with Mary Kay. I went to Dallas and walked the stage. They put the sachet and all that over my head and around my body. They would they wanted my autograph. But that was the art of sales. But the recruiting. When I was with A.L. Williams, and I was number one in recruiting, my deal was, I was using that same technique, stop selling, recruit them. I felt like this. If I asked a person, this is how I did it. Do you know anybody that would love to earn an extra $400 to $1,000 a month working part-time approximately four to 10 hours a month. It was Most people said me. Then I would take them to a meeting or I would give them a demonstration how it works and, they, and or then I took them to a meeting and they would get in. But when they got in, there's one thing that they needed and what was that? A policy. They need their own insurance policy. They need their own insurance policy. And I got the commissions for that. So the first time I ever got a commission, $250, $300, whatever it was, I was like, baby, I can do this all day long. And I'm looking at you in your eyes right now. And I'm letting you know that if you start to work your business, any business, as a recruiter, even the military recruits, and you used to get so good at it because it's stuff that they like anyway. You already got the customer base. They're already buying. I tell people, like the young man and the father came in yesterday. They came in to buy some displays. So they bought some displays, and I said, what are you going to do with those? They said, we're going to, we got a product that we're going to put in the store. Well, it, it was, I don't know, I didn't see it. They were bags or whatever. And they thought that display was perfect for that product. I said, if you're already in stores, I said, do you still sell the burning on? The they said, yeah. But I don't see them all the time, right? So I said, uh, do you put that in the store? They said, no. I said, why wouldn't you do that? You already got the customer. Just follow through. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, all we're going to do is take the product, put your label on it that matches the label on that product. 
Now you got a, a, a product line. Like my boy down in uh, down Louisiana, we're talking. So I get one uh, somebody that was in branding and marketing like me had approached them and asked them, "You're selling all this stuff, but do you have something with that uh, that you label for yourself?" And he said, "No." But he had been talking to me already, so when 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 the guy hit him in the head, it made more sense, right? So now the, the young man, his father, I said, do you realize that the money you make every day is going to double when you put when you put your label on it and when you recruit other people to sell your product other than just giving it to the stores? It was like I, I could see a palm coming over him. But I'm gonna I'm, now. I'm gonna get into a mentorship, and this is where you really begin to rock and roll. I started getting really back into mentoring, mentoring again. Mentoring is also an art form. There's so many different ways you can mentor somebody, but. The one thing that you got to understand, you are not a mentor unless somebody asks you to be a mentor. Now, I know a couple of people that I, I was around them, and they would say, this is my mentor. And I'm looking at them like they have lost their mind. But I didn't say nothing. But now they know. I say, how did you, how did I become your mentor? I mean, you just bullied me into being your mentor. You never asked me. And this is the, I got two young men that I'm, I'm mentoring also. And I asked them, I told them the same thing. And now they're mentoring, now I'm mentoring them because they asked to be mentored. And we're not done with it. Come back, excuse me. The, So, mentoring, to be a mentor, you have to be asked to be a mentor. Keep that straight, folks. And I don't mind now telling people, I said, do you have a mentor? And they say, no. And they might look at me and say, oh, you? I said, you got to ask me. Oh, would you like me to be a mentor? They say, yeah. I said, well, you got to ask me. And then they asked, Can, will you be my mentor? And I said, absolutely. I would love to. I was talking to a, a lady yesterday. We were doing our calls. You may get one. And we was telling the young lady what we were doing with the youth and with mentoring the youth and, and all that. And she said, you know what? My fiance may need a mentor. My fiance needs one. So I said, oh, that's nice. That's nice. And then I, the, it was like the Holy Spirit, not the Spirit, but the Holy Spirit said, ask her how old is your fiance? She told me 45 years old. And she blew me away. I said, wow. I said, you're looking out for your man like that? She said, yeah, because if it helps me, if it helps him, it helps me. I said, I love you. And I appreciate how you are looking out for somebody else. And now she'll be in my office tomorrow or Monday because she said, I need a mentor as well. So I'm going to show her mentorship. The father and son that came in here yesterday, it was so ironic. I'm, I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to talk about that. We'll talk about mental with the father-son team. Hold on. Thank you.
Thank you for choosing uh, Heavenly Bible at this, sir. Sir, what's going on, brother? This is Jamil. Jamil! The real Jamil! What's going on, big brother? <laughs> you got it, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Are you listening to the broadcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, go ahead. Do you want to elaborate on what I said so far? No, I mean, um, I'm definitely uh, tuning in and taking notes, especially on the recruiting end, you know, because, you know, that's what we that's what we got to be pushed for this month, uh, you know, with the college kids. Come on, preacher. So that's great information. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, the tactile schools. Keep talking, brother. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem, man. I had wanted to tell you I had uh, opened up the... Uh, sample pack you sent me. Nice. And what happened? What did you, what you do with it yet so I'm far? I'm man. The air freshman was a big bang. Did you get the chance to share it with anybody? The air, fresh, air freshman is not yet. No. Okay. That is going to be your number one recruiting tool. Right there. When we get off the air, matter of fact, why, get off, why do I have to wait to get off the air? Let me show you how this works, folks. You ready for this? Yeah. We talking about recruit. We gonna still stay on recruiting. We was moved on to mentorship, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We we we're gonna deal with this. What do you have? How's your business cards? You got real nice business cards. Oh yeah, uh, double sided matted cool coat. Nice. Now, if you spray that on that card, it's gonna be kind of a little slippery and stuff, right? Right, right. But it doesn't matter. Soon as you take that bottle and you take that business card. I got some right here, and you spray it. You say this is one of the first things you want to say when you approach somebody, and they see your in your hand. Excuse me, excuse me. Can I get your opinion on a fragrance, real quick, please? You spray it, and you give them a card, and they smell. They say, "Oh, that smells good." So you know anybody that need any extra cash? They don't say me. What I gotta do? You feel me? Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what do you think about that? Oh, man, that's good, man. That's a good introduction real quick. It don't take much time. And then it engages them enough to be, uh, you know, put it in the hands. You know, you put the product in the hands. It's the own sense of ownership. That's it. Now you got it. And the first, one of the things you want to do, like you said, ownership. You want to put the bottle in their hand. And then they say, well, well, how much is this? And what I got to do? That's when you use that. Whatever it is, five dollars, then thirty-six dollars a dozen. If you get fifty or more than two fifty each, bang. And then you say, I do again, you can hit them again. So do you know anybody that needs some extra cash? Mm -hmm. Bang. You got them. How's that sound? Oh man, that's outstanding. <laughs> and I wanted to uh I wanted to talk to you, uh, maybe offline about uh about some of these numbers that we had, you know, from what we had discussed last time the other night. Yes, sir. And when we do, we do, when we get on, go ahead, I'm listening. But, uh, yeah, man, what you were saying, man, with recruiting, man, that's, that's the big, like you said, get away from sales and get into recruiting, then you can focus on training, uh, then you can focus on getting them the tools that, that's going to be, for them to be successful to make money and then making money, make you money. Imagine doing that all day long. And the beautiful part is, and see, you are, I mentioned you yesterday. You and my business associate, one of down Keith, down in uh, Louisiana. He, uh, you all have uh, uh, sales reps that go out, right? Like a street team, right? That's right. Right. Imagine your street team recruiting. That's all they doing yeah. all day long. That's all they doing. You teaching them to recruit. I told you before. You put a phone on a speaker and put it around your sales team. They ain't gonna. They don't have to know my name. They don't have to know where I'm at. Even if they didn't know my, they don't have to know nothing. And you watch. We talking about recruiting and and mentorship. You teach your staff, your crew, uh, how to recruit and how to mentor their recruits. You got it, baby. You ain't. Your whole life is gonna change right before your eyes, right in your face. Man, that's so funny because that's what I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm going to take you places. Do you have a mentor? You. Yeah, you. Did you ask me? Yeah, you volunteered. No, ask me. And you got to ask me. I'll ask you, brother. You will, you'll be my mentor, sir. 
Yes, I will be a mentor. I'll be glad to be a mentor because it's needed. We are, I'm telling you, people are foolish. They don't see that they need somebody in their life that knows more about what they need to know. They're striving for stuff, and you don't, let's say a massage therapist, a massage therapist, okay? Let's keep it simple. Mm -hmm. You got a massage therapist or a motivational speaker, even a pastor. And these, these people are just going out doing what they do. They're out there talking about stuff and they don't, and, and they don't have no mentor. But they, mm -hmm. and they want their, and they think their uh, constituents or their customer, they're making them feel like they're the top of the game. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what a customer would do is say, wow. I got this person, and this person don't even know enough about the industry. They even really, even, even, you know, they just, what they're really doing is wasting their time and blowing smoke up their people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Even a pastor needs a mentor. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If you, if you got. To, uh, to, to, to increase, um, or to get to your goals, it's as smart as what you do. You need somebody to talk to, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Somebody that knows what you're going through. Uh, somebody that's been through what you're going through. Uh, Come on. You know, somebody that can help you through all hard times. So you don't have to uh, go through what they went through. Absolutely. Now, watch this. I'm going to keep, now I'm going to hit you in your cranium. Okay? Here we go. Most people that you come in contact with that, that's in a profession, do yourself a favor. Ask them so you can get the data, the data that you need. They say, excuse me, do you have a mentor? And as soon as they say, mm, they start that, no, no. Be wary and scary of a person like that. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Because they are the top of the heat. They are the best that they know. And most people that really think they're in top of, on, on top of the game, they, they either get their mentorship from TV, radio, CDs, DVDs, and they think they got it made because they uh, are listening to this stuff. And they are, are growing, but until you know they have another human being to tell you you ain't as good as you think, right? And check yeah, you. Right. And check you at the door. Because I speak to a lot of people that just, they talking about the industry. They talking, talking, talking. And I got to stop them to say, are you kidding me? You could do much better if you did this. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what a mentor will do. A mentor will literally almost embarrass you. It'll feel like they they stepping on your game, and that's what a mentor will do. They'll, that's love. When you got a mentor telling you you're wrong, you need that. Yeah, it elevates your game. Absolutely. It you know your, your game and how you do business uh, as a whole. It gives you a new perspective, a new set of eyes. You know, because sometimes you can get so bogged down uh, with doing things in your vision that you miss things. And, you know, somebody that can see that uh, and understand that can be able to point it to bring it to your attention. So. You know, initially, initially, though, it hurts you. It hurts your heart. Initially, because, and, and uh, when, when my, uh, my boy uh, Patrick chimes in today, he'll tell you, he said, when, when, let's say you're working for a church and you are, let's say, uh, you're the leader of the uh, usher board, right? You're the head usher. And all of a sudden, the pastor comes to you one day and says, I need to move you to the, the, the uh, collection of the tithes and offering. Isn't that going to hurt you at first? Because you, you you got the, you got this thing. He may not even want you to be the leader of the tithe and offering. He just wants you to work with the tithe and offering. He or she wants you to work with the tithe and offering. And move somebody into that the position you're in. Isn't that going to hurt your heart? 
Yeah, uh, you're not prepared for it. Absolutely. Initially, it's going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Right? But that's the mental. And then if you, if you take it, you take it in a spirit of love, right? And that this is my mentor. And this mentor is telling me this for a reason. And when you actually go through that phase or that maze, when you come out, you come out a better person. That's right. That's what a mentor is. A mentor is going to stop you in your tracks sometimes and tell you you ain't that good. That's right. Listen, when I get done with you, Brother Rashid, you're going to be the one of the hottest, hottest master distributors South Carolina has ever seen. Trust me, that is my goal. As a mentor, my goal is to make you the hottest master distributor in the game. And people are going to know it. They're going to know you're hot. They're going to know because they're going to tell you. They said, I never met nobody like you before. Mm -hmm. When you hear that sound right there, it's on and popping. It's on and popping. You know, you know you're touching people's lives then, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how you feel about this conversation this morning? Oh, man, it's outstanding. I mean, this is a great topic. Uh, a uh, great, great topic. Uh, because I know a lot of us uh, in, in business, even in, inside of the industry, you know, you, you, you know how our business is, and we talk about trendsetting and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of people that are very comfortable. Uh, and like you say, they're the top of the heat. They're the best person that they know. Mm -hmm. And that's why they don't need what they achieve because they don't surround themselves with other people who know more. Uh, that can mentor them. Rochelle, hold on one second, beloved. Hold that thought, beloved. Hold on. Okay. Carl, you on the air? Good morning. Good morning, brother. Good morning, beloved. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm really doing I'm gonna good. I'm going to try to put you all on conference. Let me try. I'm going to try. Okay, brother Rasheed. Yeah. And brother Patrick. Yes, sir. I got both of y'all on at the same time. Come on. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, 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 brother Rasheed, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let brother Patrick. Uh, no, matter of fact, brother Patrick, I'm gonna let Rasheed finish what he was saying. Please finish what you were saying, brother Rasheed. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, um, I was just that, I, that was pretty much it, brother, uh, sir. Say it again. That you. I was saying mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I lost my train of thought. What was that? Uh, no, we were talking about the, the art of th this uh, a program being the right thing because when people are at the top of their own game. Oh, yeah, yeah. When people are at the top of their game, like you say, that's the best that they the top of the heat. It's the best that they know, you know. And uh, they don't have nobody else around them, you know, to make them better or to give them a new set of eyes for, you know, their vision uh, or their business. And, you know, they can only go as far as they can personally see, you know, but a lot of times in business, you need another set of eyes uh, to be able to give you a different perspective on what you think your business looks like, you know. Hey, I may think you're the best of the best, but somebody can come along and say, well, man, you know, this is what I don't like about it, and this is what y'all not doing. You know, and then it allows you to improve. There you go. And you know what? By yourself, you, you never know. You know something? You mentioned something, though, just a little while ago. You said something about this industry, about the fragrance industry, how fickle it is. Right. And people really think they know what they're doing. All these street hustlers, you ever see people selling oils or stuff like that? Yeah, it's like they're selling um, uh, tops to a pen. It's real cheap. <laughs> But did you see the quality of what they do is not that good. No, it's horrible. It's horrible. And that's why that's why this industry, if you really think about it, we can get hot in this industry because nobody's really doing it the right way. Absolutely. So if you're recruiting people and you're putting them in a, a situation like this, let's say you started your own uh your own uh broadcast from nine thirty to ten thirty. And you were talking to all your constituents. And then Patrick came on from 11 to 12. 
and we were tuning into his and how he was doing it. That's what that's what we need. We need more brainiacs, not maniacs. We need brainiacs, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna shift to brother Patrick. What's on your mind, brother Patrick? Good morning. Man, I'm just happy to be in the land of the living because I'm very, 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 very graceful. I appreciate this day, man. And yes. um, I was listening. I had an emergency pipe bus up here. You know, it's freezing cold up here. So in my apartment complex, a pipe burst. So I had to get the guys, the maintenance guys, started this morning. And um, I, I put the broadcast on, and I was in and out the office listening here and there. But I was able to get back in here and sit down. By the time um, you got Brother Rashid on the phone, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in here, baby. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you talked about being uh, having a mentor. Everyone needs a mentor, and um, y'all sound like y'all know that, but a lot of people don't know that. If you got a mentor, you can be constructively criticized. And the mentor that you have to be acceptable to constructive criticism. Yes. And so by you having a mentor, that's where that constructive criticism comes from. But then in turn, you are advancing yourself, and you need to teach someone else. You have to show other people where they're lacking at. Because if they don't know, you got them around you, then they're going to bring you down. Absolutely. So when they say iron sharpens iron, us we, we sharpen in each other. Oh, we my help goodness. Each other. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Patrick, you, you are hitting it on the nose. We, listen, I got to say this with, with enthusiasm and with conviction. This industry that we in is so simple to recruit. It's the easiest thing you have ever seen in your life. Look how many people buy fragrance products. It's unbelievable. All we got to do now is recruit. They already want it. They already want it. They're already using the product. But, the, but who is really out here Teaching the industry and recruiting in the industry. Who's really doing it? Who? We don't do it. We got to do it. Hold, hold up, beloved. I don't, I'm scared to do it. I might lose both of y'all. Mm -mm. Hey, Mark, tell them to call back and I'm going to try to conference all of them in. Yeah, we going to do it. You know, Rashid got it right. Rashid is attacking the colleges right now. And he, you, Rashid, you watch how fast that you come up and that you're going to look at your constituents, your, your recruits, and you watch how happier they are. We're going to teach how to recruit store owners, right? Watch this. i show you how to get a, a, a let's say one of the gas stations, where they'll give you a referral to all the all, all the other brothers and sisters that's in the gas station business. I'm going to try to conference us in. Watch this. Hold on. Stay with me. Hold on. If I lose you, God bless you. Oh, I lost it. But we're good. But imagine now, when she and Patrick, you stop recruiting beauty salons. Barber shops, and they know other barber shop beauty salon owners, car washes, and the list go. Have you even thought about going to the laundromats? It's going to be bananas. But the deal is, you are the head of the recruiting, and you're going to teach your recruits how to recruit. That's how it's done in the real world. Am I right, Rashid? It's Rashad, sir. Rashad, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. You're right. Yes. You're right. Come on, Rashad. Well, Go ahead. Go ahead, big brother. Do you know, do you know, uh, yesterday, my mind been going ever since I've been into this, this business. 
with you, sir. Yes. And um, I appreciate you for that. My You're welcome. Um, son, me and my son created a, a new company yesterday. Nice. And the name of our company is called Nuisance Marketing Group. What is it? Nuisance Marketing Group. Nice. Why? Why and that? Why that? Because. I'm going to get on your nerves <laughs> with the way I market. Uh -huh. Because guerrilla marketing is the most successful marketing out in the marketing um, era, of the marketing era. You got me clapping. A lot of people, a lot of people use guerrilla marketing, oh. so I can't use that. But I know that if I stay in your ear, stay in your ear, stay in your face, Stay in your face, stay in your eyes, let you see me all the time. I'm going to become a nuisance to you. Lord, have mercy. Hold on, beloved. Hold on. Sorry, there is no call. Please try. Yes. Big bruh. Who's it? Rashad, hold on. Okay, I'm back on. We're back on three way. Go ahead. Yeah, so I become a nuisance to you. So, what not better way to explain what I'm going to do by saying nuisance marketing group? Lord, have mercy. How did your son take that? He was happy because you told me about the dollar sign that was going to generate his excitement. And I said, I took it home. Yeah. I said, Destin, I said, how are we going to create some money? He said, I don't know. I said, let me show you. I pulled up the computer. I clicked on Photoshop. And Photoshop came up. It was empty. I said, click on new. He clicked on new. And it gave him a, a place to say, uh, pixels or inches or whatever the size of the platform is going to be. Nice. I, he said, what am I supposed to do? I said, you got to tell the computer what size publication you're getting ready to come create. He, he said, uh, what size is that, that card that you made? I said, four by six. He said, four by six. I said, four inches by six inches. Mm -hmm. So, he said he started putting it in there, but he put it in there backwards. So that made it upright. And so he said, that ain't how you put it. I said, well, you got to put it in a different way. Mm. So he changed it around mm. and put it in the four inches width and, uh, and uh, I mean, four, four inches height and six inches width. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he had him a, a, a platform. I said, okay, now what you going to put on there? He said, love it. I don't know. I said, what is we going to be doing this for? He said, to make some money. I said, so is we going to make money with Exquisite? He said, yeah. I said, how is we going to make money with Exquisite when Exquisite is the air freshener and the body oil company? He said, well, we got to make up something else then. I said, let's start a marketing group. He said, what are we going to call it? What'd he say? Rashad, you still there? I'm here. Okay, we lost, it look like we lost old boy. But let's, um, we're gonna wind this down. I just wanna um, thank you for tuning in, man. I, you know, I think we're, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do great things together, Rashad. Oh yeah, brother, I, I believe the same way. You know, I definitely know we're gonna do big things, and I look forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to meet you. I hey, here, man, I swear to God, I can't wait to meet you, man. I um, uh, when I when God has shown me that we had to talk about uh, a recruiting, and when He showed that we had to talk about mentorship, I believe, and I've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. This is the best, 
broadcast. This is the best meeting I have ever had in my I'm 53 years old. And this is the best broadcast I have ever, ever done. We are so blessed to know that we are going to change the way we do business in the, in the fragrance industry. That's right. It's awesome. This is one of my soldiers right here just came in. Come over right here in the camera. Go on, get that, get that thing. Sit, sit down. We only got a couple more minutes. This is my one of my soldiers right here. This is uh he's a uh, 12th grader, and um he's in the building right now. And he, I've been training him for a couple of months now. At first, we talked about the branding, the marketing, the identity, all that, the psychology, and all that. Then he came and he learned how to pour and label and all that stuff. Now he's learned how to pack down boxes, how to tape it, how to do an order from beginning to end. And this is just his training ground. You feel me? Oh, yeah. This is mentorship at its best. This is, go ahead and say something, brother. This is Jarrell, brother Jarrell. My name is Jarrell Fan. Speak a little loud. Good morning, brother. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to you, too. And how how you doing these days, man? What you learning? Um, I learned a lot. Learned a lot. Um, a lot of um package boxes. Um, do orders. Stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna teach him one of uh, the training before the year's out. We're gonna teach him how to answer the phone, how to take the orders, how to do customer mm -hmm. service. He's gonna be greeting the customers in the in the lobby. See, it's on and on. He's getting ready. Uh, and then I think one of the next things is definitely we're going to do the media. So he's going to be able to do his uh, broadcast, do his own show, all that. Oh, yeah. Outstanding, man. There it goes. Yeah. But it's all, about, uh, it's all about what we're doing here with the, uh, with the uh, networking and all of that, you know? And I appreciate oh, yeah. I appreciate God for giving us the opportunity to come together like this to show people this is for real. This is this is one of the guys. This is one of them. You know, and it's it's, it's my privilege and definitely my pleasure to do it. Do I act like I don't want to do this? No, sir. Oh no, not, not ever. <laughs> Man, this, hey, this is a blessing, and it's a blessing from God. You know, that we can take people under our tutelage and help them. Yeah, I mean that—that's the uh, you know that's the reason why we do it, man. Is to is, is to be able to, like you say, find people, to, younger people, our people to just help and educate, that's and, it. Uh, give them the skills that they need that's going to help them be successful in life. That's it. That's all it is. And I want to thank you, brother Rashad, and thank you for thank helping you. me with your name. <laughs> I've been calling you Rasheed for the next five years if you didn't help me. Oh, man, I know it. Though. I had to hurry up and catch you. <laughs> and they say you heard people call you worse, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, but I think... Hey, thanks, sir. You're welcome, thanks, brother. Sir. I'll be talking to you in a few minutes. All right, man. All right, God bless you and your family. You too. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. God bless you and your family. Don't forget... To share this information, share it, give me some comments on this. I, this is the one I really want some comments on. Comment, all right, and be definitely follow. Follow. When you got people, you know somebody want to tune in to a Ustream.com, and when they come on Sir Media Group, the, tell them to follow. Tell them to follow, press that follow button, because we're going to prove to the world that we're going to be able to, we're going to do this. My main thing right now is the youth and women. Now get ready to teach y'all how to do some, some great and wonderful things. Again, thank you and have a great day. God bless you and your families. Peace and love. Very good. My best one ever. My best one ever. I want to thank God for it. Yes, Lord. Yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fellas, I hope everybody has a great day today. Just enjoy the day. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Oh, yeah. It's on and popping. We're going to keep it going for a minute. Thank you for choosing Heavenly Body Parts. This sir, may I help you? Hold on, please.
Hey, Mark. Oh, you already did it. You already did it, miss?